Welcome to Ask Gwen, everyone. Today with me, I have Bill on this lovely Halloween, October 31st, 2022. And so I'm going to let Bill take it away and share his story and why he wrote a book about entrepreneurship. And then I'm going to let Bill take it away. So welcome, Bill. Thank you so much, Wynn. Um my, uh, my background is I, I was born and raised in a small community in Northern Canada. And uh, it was a place where people helped each other. And so I grew up thinking that it was the responsibility of the strong to protect the weak. Um, and that if I could be helpful to someone, I should be. And part of that seemed to come across. I, I led a challenging life as I grew up. I was uh, born with a hereditary retinal disorder, which eventually turned into me being legally blind. Um, and so that and a series of other challenges led me to having probably a higher level of empathy than most. Um, and so I would find myself sitting on the bus and people would just come and sit next to me and say, I'm really having a hard time. And I thought, you know, if this is going to keep happening to me, I should probably maybe get paid for this or something. And so I uh, started to become a, a clinical psychologist. And then I realized that a lot of the folks I was working with and helping, I was working in, uh, with families in crisis and troubled teens and uh, working on crisis lines and those kinds of things. And I, I came to realize that a lot of the people I was helping were just doing the best they could. Yeah. And... I thought, if I keep going down this path, it'll drive me insane. And so I shifted into public administration, worked in native land claims in British Columbia. And they would ask me these deep philosophical questions like, what is self-government? Or what will the province look like 50 years after claims are settled? And the last question they asked me was, how do we, we convince a group of people we've treated terribly for over 100 years that they should trust us? And I thought, what a great question. And so I went to Duke and did my doctoral thesis on building trust in hostile environments and then left there and went to work for a big consulting firm, McKinsey and Company. And uh, I, I spent the last 20 years of my career helping people better understand what trust is, how it works and how to build it. And so um, in the short amount of time we have today, yeah. Why did you write the book? Well, I wrote the book because I was having really significant impact on individuals, one person at a time. And it felt like I was dropping grains of sand in the ocean. And I, I look around the world and I see that we have problems in terms of getting along and collaborating and those kinds of things. And I wrote the book so that it, it could have a broader impact. So, and so that it, my legacy was left behind if something ever happened to me. So you wrote the book basically to leave a legacy and that's totally, totally cool. And um, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm actually 11 times author, soon to be 12. I'm um, ramping up the publishing industry again. And this will be the last and final book I write. Um, or there might be a certain book, I don't know, because of how my life is going. But um, leaving the legacy, and this is why I started Ask When, leaving the legacy and helping people just to be their light, just to carry on, um, is a wonderful thing. And so I think all of us learned during the pandemic that nothing is too big and we can't handle anything because at the beginning of the pandemic, we were all freaking out, Americans and Canadians and every which way I like, because we're like, okay, world pandemic, losing jobs. And so if you go and read Dale's book, just know he's doing it to leave a legacy to help people. And what is the name of book, Dale? Just 
in case people want to go buy it off Amazon? Sure. It's called Building Trust, Exceptional Leadership in an Uncertain World. Building Trust, yeah. Exceptional Leadership in an Uncertain World. And for those of you who um, have Audible or like Audible or need Audible, thank you very much. I need it because that's how I consume my books. Dale's book is on Audible, and I wish a lot more authors on this podcast were on Audible so I could at least read the book. But um, I haven't, I found it a nice surprise yesterday when I go look up your book on Amazon, and I'm like, Audible, there's a nice, refreshing. Surprise. So why did you put it on Audible? Did you put it on Audible for your own disability or did you put it on Audible just to be helpful to others? Well, I use most of, I struggle to read as well um, because of my vision. Um, some of the, some of the e-readers are, are helpful, but I find Audible easier. And I just wanted to have broader access because I think the things I'm talking about are, they apply to everyone. Yes. So what, because of Christmas and Thanksgiving coming up, what would be your greatest piece of advice to someone listening to this? And I don't care when you guys are listening, you're pro probably going to be listening later this afternoon, you get ready for the craziness with your kids, basically. And so what would be your greatest advice to build trust in others as we come up on Thanksgiving and Christmas and those of us who like to help the less fortunate, i.e. me. Um, <laughs> and yeah, because when you're dealing with the less fortunate, they might not have trust in a stranger handing them $5 or handing them a gift card to McDonald's. And I have talked to homeless people in my life. I have homeless people in my life. I try to give it back as much as I can. But for those who want to run the other direction, when they see people coming in and helping at a homeless center, what would be the first word of advice coming from you? So when I talk about trying to build trust, and I, I, I thought you were going to go a different way. I thought you were going to talk about the struggles we sometimes have with family around those turbulent times around Thanksgiving and Christmas and the challenges that that Which could be. Which my next question. <laughs> next question but I kind of threw a curveball in there and start with giving back right and so part of the challenge is is that when, when people have so little they feel incredibly vulnerable and for me trust is a combination of uncertainty and vulnerability we ask ourselves two fundamental questions the first is how likely am I to be harmed and the second is, if I'm harmed, how bad's it going to hurt? And so part of the way that I suggest people build trust is, is starting off with a little bit of vulnerability themselves. So asking, how can I be helpful? Uh, including that other person in the conversation. Maybe telling a story of, of themselves or someone close to them who's been in a similar situation and saying, I just wish that someone had reached out to them the way that I would like to reach out to you. And so we reassure, and then we try to be benevolent. Benevolence is the belief that you've got my best interest at heart. And a lot of times people have that, but they just struggle to have it come across the way that they want it to. And so I start with a bit of vulnerability, telling a story about ourselves, and then a bit of benevolence. How can I help? What would good look like right now? So my next question, which you led me to, is, okay, how can we build trust in the 
family members that we only see at Thanksgiving and the occasional family members that we only see at Christmas. Once a year, they pop out of the family closet and right. want to be nice to you. And eesh, that's hot. <laughs> uh, you're fantastic, Wynn. Um, <laughs> so I think uh, a lot of times we have stories. We interpret the world through stories. Yes. And so sometimes when people come to us and they, they're trying to be helpful or thoughtful or caring, it comes across as condescending or controlling or manipulative. Yeah. And if we can approach them with the most positive story, we, we can muster um, and interpret their actions as positively as possible. Uh, you know, a lot of times in the book, I talk to people about starting trust-based conversations. And a lot of times we struggle with those because it feels awkward or like it'll provoke defensiveness or rude. But if we start with, you know, I heard this guy talking about trust and he was saying that trust is a combination of uncertainty and vulnerability. And I think about the ways that we're vulnerable to each other in terms of our self-esteem and the way we think about ourselves and our feelings of inclusion and those kinds of things. And then I think about how we're uncertain about each other. Like, what do I really know about you and, and the way you approach the world? And what do you really know about me? And that can bring out some of these pieces that we're making assumptions about. And so if we start with a positive story and then when someone says something that we struggle with, say, huh, if you were me, what story would you tell to interpret that? Yeah. So so pushing them towards empathy. Pushing them towards empathy because the family members that just pop out of the closet every um, once in a while, and yeah, then they go back to their daily lives or back into the closet, yeah, we need to talk about empathy and we need to start making this world a more empathetic place. And what has one thing that your disability or a disabled person has taught you? So I have I have a, a couple of things. I, I was involved in an automotive accident and I ended up with post-concussion syndrome. So I have a mild traumatic brain injury as well, which is, has pushed a, a great deal of fatigue and um, and other struggles. And, and of course, my visual impairment. I wander the world with my guide dog, Drake. Um, my disabilities have taught me patience and empathy. And so I am able to Put myself in other people's shoes i think more readily than most and when i coach or when i advise or when i work with senior executives i'm often able to think about what's the story that somebody else is telling about their interactions with them and so i think that those are things that i've gotten particularly from my disability and what is the biggest challenge of your disability Hmm. There's a few, you know, I struggle to, to navigate the world. Um, so I spend most of my time, uh, at home. Um, I have good friends who assist me. Um, but you know, the world is, is a blurry, fuzzy place. And, um, so it can be difficult to get around. Yeah. Yeah, and I hate to be blunt, but you guys know, disabled rights is um, my passion and my calling, and that's why I started two podcasts. One, the artwork, the artwork of CP, the other one asked when, and I started these guys over 12 years ago now, and so what is the one thing you want to say to people about being blind and the one thing you want to say to a person that goes, and I apologize for my swearing, that goes 
fuck you. You're disabled. And let's next. I don't want to help you. I don't want to do anything with you to assist you in this world. I know I have come across those people um, in my own life. I know that my own family basically turned on me and I have, I actually cut them out as of Friday, you guys. So my family turned on me. They turned on me in 2010. Then they majorly turned on me in 2019. And the icing on cake was the day after my 31st, but 32nd birthday or 31st birthday, they emotionally and physically abused me in 2019 after my dad died. So I know that a lot of the people will be kind to the disabled because they think we charity cases, but some people will say, fuck you, I don't want to deal with you. So What's your advice to the people that say, F U C K, I don't want to deal with you? Well, that's a great question, Lynn. And I'm really sorry about the experiences that you've had. Um, I've been blessed with my guide dog, Drake, because uh, he sorts those people for me. So he loves people. Oh, yeah. Um. And there are some people who approach us and want to say hi to Drake and and really want to be helpful. And there are others who ignore us. And there are more than enough of the former to make up for the latter. And so, uh, and that's one of the incredible blessings I've gotten from Drake is because I couldn't see people's facial expressions. I couldn't read body language. So I didn't know when people were interested in, in engaging or not. I was often alone in a crowd. Um, but Drake changed all of that for me. And so he brings people to us. And, you know, I think one of the, I was working with a group of senior executives and I was talking about benevolence, you know, this, this desire to help other people and having someone else's best interest at heart and they they were telling all these great stories about how they had helped someone and how it had made them feel so good and all that kind of stuff and when they were finished there was this positive vibe in the room and i said this is wonderful i wonder why you're so effing selfish because you never let somebody else help you and you're experiencing this now by by doing this podcast you're helping people you're trying to make the world a better place for people with disabilities. That's a powerful and, and rewarding and incredible experience. And Drake and I allow people to have that experience on a regular basis where they're able to help us out in terms of where we're trying to go or what we're trying to find because he doesn't read so well. Um, and so other people will step up if we're in the grocery store and help us out Um and so I, I think one of the blessings of being disabled is that I'm vulnerable far more often, which allows people to engage with me in a positive way. And it allows me to sort those people who don't want to be helpful, who don't care about anyone but themselves, from those of us who aren't like that. Yep. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. I have family members who... Um, who basically as I was moving they did a couple shady um, things they re-evaluated my house they and this was all in the time span of we sold the house in um, December I moved out finally in March um I was supposed to move out in September, but I moved out in March because I knew stuff was going on. 
and given the opportunity to move um, down here, here being Phoenix, Arizona, early, um, before my house was completely turned over, I figured it was easier to get out of people's way. So that's why I said, yes, please, I'll move down there in March. And so when you clean out the house, I'm not there. But my family turned on me and they are they are no longer in my life. And if they want to come back in sport, they have to grovel at my feet because I'm financially independent and I plan to be as strong as I can as emotional and physical abuse survivor. And it happens to be a family member that abused me and she wants nothing to do with me. And it's interesting because a lot of the disabled population, well, I shouldn't say a lot, some of the disabled population get taken advantage of and people think with their able-bodied hands that they can take advantage of us, which is totally not true because the those of us who are stronger than that than we think can, um, even those of us who can't see can give a good punch and with it <laughs> verbally or physically and saying, you need to get out of my life or strike back. And so I'm lucky to have those who want to support me. I'm lucky that I have those who still want to support me after all that I've been through. And I'm super lucky to be gaining friendships every day down in Phoenix, Arizona. And I hope that's going to be stronger in the next year or so because of 2020 and 2021 and mainly because of 2020, but um, 2021 and 2022 were coming off of 2020, which was an interesting case for all of us and up in Canada and the US alike. So mm -hmm. hopefully um, I continue to inspire and make the world a better place. And hopefully people would want to approach me and help me in my daily life every single day. I agree. I agree. And sometimes a hard road makes us stronger. Yes. I definitely agree with that. So as we close this interview out, do you have any questions for me? What do you think the greatest benefit of your disability is? Oh, the, <laughs> well, the greatest benefit of my disability is just, and people will say, I'm, people will say, when you're loud mouth, when do you knock it off? But um, people have, Learn that I'm allowed milk. And so the fact that I'm able to speak and the fact that I'm not blind and not deaf, because fun fact, um, I could have easily become became deaf and blind due to oxygen saturation along with cerebral palsy um, back in 87. And the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the medical technology wasn't that great. And when you have oxygen saturation on you 24 seven, and when you're in an incubator for as long as kids with cerebral palsy or um, the, the stuff in the incubator doesn't always work out. So I'm lucky that I haven't experienced that. I know people that are blind. I have a very good friend that's blind that was my next door neighbor for a little while. He did not have a guide dog, guide dog. he used a cane. But um, it's interesting because the greatest blessing 
uh, that my disability is just being an advocate for others and wanting to help to the best of my ability. Right. Yeah, I I agree with you. The, the The desire to help and the ability to help. I do what I can. We do what we can as disabled people. So where can people find you, Dale? And where can people find their book? So they can find me on Trust Unlimited uh, at trustunlimited.com. And there's articles and, uh, and other podcasts in the blog section. If they want to look at those, they can also, uh, I've started a, a YouTube channel. I, I only have 22 subscribers so far, so there's plenty of room. Well, we're going um, to change that. We're going to yeah. change that. And uh, I'm on LinkedIn as well. And if they want to buy the book, they can find it on Amazon or anywhere you buy uh, online books. And as I said, Audible, you guys, if you type in Dale Strickland on Audible, he will pop up and try, and building trust will pop up. I found it. It's easy to find. And go support him on Audible, you guys, because Audible is one of those ways that you can support. We keep talking about Amazon, but Audible, uh, let's branch out and let's get multiple incomes going here because Audible is another way. And yes, you can find my work on Audible and you can also follow people on Audible now because let's say if you like their work, you can also follow them on Audible and you can also get their latest work only on Audible, and you can also follow them on Amazon. So let's do multiple streams of income to help each other out. The disabled have jobs just like you guys do, and we want to support ourselves. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode of Ask When, and I will catch you next time. Bye, you guys.